Dog owners, has your furry companion ever saved your life? Parmesan came to me as a six-month-old puppy rescued from a dog fighting situation. We're not entirely sure what breed she is, but my best guess is a lurcher and staffy mix. She is a wonderfully well-tempered dog with people and most dogs, but you absolutely do not threaten her, she'll have you bleeding. A year after getting Parmesan we took a trip up to a quaint camping spot. In my country, we don't have any trespassing laws. As long as you're respectful and non-destructive, you can walk over any hills you like and camp on any beach you choose so long as you leave the area how you found it. So, by the time of this camping trip, I'd had Parmesan for a few months. She'd never come camping with us before, but as far as my family is concerned, dogs go on camping trips, so when we all piled into the car, she came too. Unusually, though, none of the family friends could make it, so it was only me, my sister, my dad, and my mom. I didn't mind, I wasn't that attached to the other kids. I'd rather play with my dog, and I'd still have my sister. The drive took six hours, and because we'd left a bit later, we arrived at sunset. This was not an ideal time to be building a tent, but we'd expected to arrive to see other campers already set up and the beach illuminated in campfires. Yet, the beach was empty. In spite of this, my parents started taking stuff out and trying to build the tent. They asked us to fetch some of the lighter bags from the car's boot while they sat pointing a flashlight at the sand to see properly. I rolled down the window of the car for Parmesan before getting out. It was pretty hot for that time of year, and I wanted her to have air. Always gotta be looking out for my furry little homie. As we're fumbling about in the dark, on a beach, in the middle of nowhere, it's pretty spooky. The one road that led to this beach was circular and had a bridge over the water, meaning you could basically circle around the beach like a big zero shape if you felt like it. I wasn't really paying any attention to the road, I was complaining. After 15 minutes of my dad trying to nail the tent into the sand, my mom asked him if he had seen that car drive around? It's been a few times. My dad shrugged her off. He's sort of like that. I don't know if he said anything back to her, but after a few more minutes, a car pulled up next to ours on the road, and someone got out. It was maybe 15 or 20 feet from the cars to where we were, and the light was pretty low, except for the flashlights. We weren't expecting to see anyone else out here at this point, and I think my mom said, it must be the security. I don't know why a random beach would have security. The guy was walking pretty unevenly. He must have been drunk or high because he had that stagger. There was no way this guy was sober. Cool. A junkie. It's not an unusual find, but it's rare to see them in the wild. As he walked into flashlight range, we realized he was carrying a large knife, maybe 15 inches long. I don't like my dad, but credit to him. Once he saw this, he got up immediately, holding onto the camping mallet, and put us all behind him. The man shouted wildly at us that we couldn't camp here and was just letting us know. My dad tried to initially be a bit low-key with the guy and told him that it was fine, and we'd leave, but this didn't work. He kept coming closer to us, so my dad started shouting, and the man kept shouting back. My sister and I were crying. I remember shaking, I was utterly terrified, as I'm sure anyone would be in that situation. It really did seem like this guy and my dad were going to fight, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't fancy my dad's chances. While it's grim to consider, I'm convinced he would have slaughtered my dad and possibly us once he was done, as I don't think my mother would have had the common sense to run with us. I love her, but she's always put dad and her relationship with him above us. Luckily, this isn't how it went down. A bolt from the black, like a wolf descending on its prey, took us all by surprise, most of all the man with a knife. At that moment, Parmesan was the apex predator large canines represent in nature. She got him good by the arm and clamped down hard, ripping his jacket and shredding the skin underneath. He dropped the knife as it had been in the arm she had got him by. He kicked her, punched her, and eventually got her off. He grabbed the knife from the sand, ran back to his car, and drove off. Parmesan didn't follow him. She stayed with us, muzzle covered in blood. As quickly as we could, we gathered our things and all got back in the car, all pretty shaken up by the incident. I looked Parmi over, she was okay, but the car's window was much more open than I'd left it. We think what happened was when the shouting started, she must have put her paws up on the gap I'd left for her. As it was an old car and had rolly down windows and not an electric button, we think she must have been able to hit it with her paws to force it down enough to squeeze out. We were all pretty scared, and since we had the dog with us, we couldn't book into a hotel for the night. My parents decided just to drive home so we could all feel safe but first had to drive into the nearest town for petrol as we were already quite low. I spent the time trying to clean Parmesan up a little. I'd always loved dogs, but what she'd just done for me blew my mind. As we drove into town, we came across a petrol station that looked closed. My dad drove up closer to get a better look and stuck his head out the window to get a better look at the sign. My mom asked him what on earth he was doing, and he told her he was trying to see when it opened. Then I saw him. My heart sank. The man with the knife was parked in the corner, behind a van, so we hadn't seen him at first. He was sitting on the bonnet of his car, using some tissue paper to clean up his arm. It looked pretty bad. My dad peeled out of there without stopping to refuel or look anywhere else in town. He decided to go to the next town over, but this town no longer had any stations either. The next town over was 60 miles away. We realized we didn't have enough petrol to reach that. We were going to break down. That's fine, dad said, we had AA cover. They'd come to tow us home or at least to somewhere acceptable for the night. It's better than staying in the last town. After driving for maybe 5 minutes, lights flash us from behind. Another car. The same car the man had been driving. It was him following us. He must have realized we were low on petrol. The next 30 minutes was one of the worst 30 minutes of my life. 
I had a complete and utter breakdown, as did everyone really. I could tell my parents were trying to keep it under wraps so it wouldn't upset us, but we weren't really little kids, we were both double digits, and we knew how dangerous this situation was. Dad turned off the radio to conserve petrol, and the man followed us for 55 miles before he peeled away onto another road. Our fuel meter was on the big red E for empty for the last 10 miles, we were driving on fumes. I don't really believe in God, but if he does exist, that was definitely one of his miracles. Once we got there, we drove into a petrol station and refilled to a full tank before driving the rest of the way home. My sister and I slept in the car after that. I only woke up once we made it all the way home, I'm just grateful nothing worse had happened than that. After getting some sleep, my mom phoned the non-emergency line for the police and reported what had happened. They never got back to her after that, but apparently, the woman she spoke to said they might wish to in the future, as he matched the description of a suspect wanted concerning a murder charge.